one of the things that I didn't mention uh, in the last uh, video and that I should have picked up was the uh, Rhys Mogg's reference to the Zill Lanes for Moscow's Privileged. Uh, this was something that took place during the Cold War and during the height of the USSR, but it still happens, frankly, in Moscow. I can remember on many an occasion being stuck on the side of the road because Archbishop um, Kirill was passing, and he had a bigger motorcade even than Putin. And it was so frustrating. And I, and I think, you know, when you think of that sort of of that sort of privilege, and then you think of Taylor Swift getting a uh, a police escort to her concert uh, at at Wembley, the Eras tour. Um, how, how fitting that we've seen something quite similar unfold in modern British politics, where levels of corruption are inching forward to the point that we can start to make comparisons. It seems our very own Robert Jenrick and Kemi Badenoch have found themselves not only in a race for leadership, but in a race for police escorts as well. <laughs> Jenrick, meticulous and detail-oriented, has quite humorously found himself aligned with the desires of the privileged, while Badenoch's charisma seems to command support even from quarters one might not expect. Jenrick, who, as Nadine Doris pointed out, uh, his father... Um, did business from the back of a white van. His mother was a secretary. You know, he has... He, he He's a self-made man. And and yet, he, he sort of gives that aura of privilege. It's quite extraordinary. It's a delightfully embarrassing spectacle for the dignified offices they both hold or are aspiring to hold. Frankly, as a middle-aged man myself, I must admit it's all a bit beneath one's dignity to be zipping around London as though the capital streets were one's personal playground. And let's not forget Keir Starmer, the self-appointed cleaner of the Orgean stables, who, like Caesar's wife, should be above suspicion. Or at least that was the promise. But now here we are watching as free tickets for a Taylor Swift concert result in a sort of preferential treatment that evokes memories of Soviet times. Police escorts, the symbol of state privilege, are meant for the king, the prime minister, or most foreign dignitaries in dire need of protection. But now it seems Taylor Swift fans receive such favours as well. And in return for what? Free concert tickets. It's cheap. Indeed, such behaviour flirts dangerously with the ministerial code, which warns against even the appearance of influence being traded for hospitality. And yet here we are, trading in police time, public inconvenience, or is it public conveniences? They seem to be a thing of the past, don't they? And the dignity of office for a few minutes saved and some Swiftian applause. It's all quite dodgy, downright dodgy, one might say. If one were going to participate, partake in such actions, surely more ought to come out of it than a brush with pop stardom. As for the generic Badenoch race, it's remarkable that these two candidates, both hailing from the right of the Conservative Party, are vying for leadership at a time when the Conservative vote has dwindled and the need for reform and to pull back the uh, one-nation Tories, both inside and outside the government, has never been greater. Jenrick, ever the detail man, wants us out of the ECHR, while Badenoch, more enigmatic on policy specifics, captivates audiences with her rhetorical flair and her defiance of the um, Speaker of the House of Commons. Perhaps it's fitting that Starmer, nervous on Wednesdays, must now reckon with both. Who is going to be the worse that can face him? And yet with all this going... Oh, well, I suppose he could just simply... Um, he could just simply st sit down on every question and say, that's not correct. And yet with all this going on, we must ask... Where is dignity? Where is authority? In a contest where police escorts and free concert tickets take centre stage, the leadership ambitions of these two candidates risk being overshadowed by the trappings of power and influence. Tomorrow's debate, um, or actually yesterday's debate, um, on GB News, uh, it didn't reveal very much. It, uh, it, it, it simply confirmed that Jenrick was ill-prepared, but that's something that we know he doesn't read his brief. He doesn't do his homework. Which leaves us probably with Kemi Badenoch as the, as the next leader of the Conservative Party. And it will be decided in a week's time or so.
it's a sad, it, it's a sad um, sort of nail in the coffin of conservatism, but it's also a sad nail in the coffin of British politics. And one can only hope that um, pop star politics will be pushed to one side and the and the matters that really concern us, like who exactly will restore the Conservative Party to its rightful place as the true voice of the people, uh, the true voice of the opposition, um, the, the problem is these two candidates don't seem to want to want to be leader of the opposition. They seem to want to be prime minister. That is not going to happen. Wake up and smell reality. You have as much chance of becoming prime minister as um, my sadly deceased cats. This will not happen. And while you lurch to the right, it's even li less likely to happen. And neither Badenoch nor Jenrick have shown any competence to be leader of the opposition and to hold the present government to account, which desperately needs to happen. Um, as ever, please leave your comments. I'd be really interested to know what you think. And and if you have any aspiring desire, somebody said to me, somebody said on here in one of the comments, oh, Tim... Uh, Tim, Tim, Tim was a card-carrying conservative until a few months ago. Absolutely true, absolutely true. Um, and I eventually, I eventually gave up any hope. Uh, and now I have no party. So I feel I'm in a position to, to pontificate about whatever I, whatever I choose. Um, I have no loyalty to the Conservatives. I have no loyalty to Labour or to the Lib Dems. Um, so I take each on their merits, and there's not very much merit to be had. Lib Dems is led by somebody who should have known better and should have helped with the post office. The Conservatives are led by what? A desire for the key to number 10, which they didn't use very well in the last 14 years. And the Labour Party are led by somebody who likes glad-handing Taylor Swift. And who, in a space of a very short few months, has demonstrated that scandal and sleaze is not the um, is not the thing only of the Conservative Party. That Labour can do that just as well, and we've not even got to the budget yet. It is shameful. Shameful particularly when we think that the international situation is so dire. There are incredible dangers in Eastern Europe and in the Middle East. Incredible dangers. And we are questioning whether Jenrick will be better than Robert... Um, uh, whether Jenrick will be better than Kemi Badenoch. It's nonsensical.